Yeah, one other thing, when I took the, the skid plate off, there was a nice skid plate on there. When I took it off, this little six millimeter bolt fell. You know, it was on top of the skid plate, so it came off from somewhere. I'll to investigate and see if I can find where that little rascal came from. Today we're going to check the neutral sending unit switch, which is behind this cover behind the clutch. So, before we get started, what I've got to do is remove the foot peg here, remove this brake lever, take out 12 little uh, 6 millimeter bolts, and I've numbered each one, 1 through 12, because they're different sizes. And as I take them out, I'll put them on this newspaper where I've got 1 through 12 there and I'll tape them down with tape so that they all go back in the same place. And you also have to remove this oil line, just take it loose, and then this oil line, take that loose there. So I'll do another picture once I've got it apart. Okay, I've got the clutch side cover off. And if we look way up under there, there's one of the screws on the neutral sending unit switch. The other one is up higher, so we've got to take this whole clutch assembly out. I've got some towels stuffed in some of the oil passages here. I don't want any foreign material or nuts or bolts or anything to fall in there. And here are all the, the bolts all numbered to correspond to where they go. And the good news is the gasket's in good shape so we can reuse that. On mine, I don't know what the guy used, he used some kind of sealant, but I had a heck of a time cleaning all that up to get a new gasket on, but this is in great shape here. So what I'm doing here is there's five bolts with washers and springs behind them that hold the clutch pressure plate on. So I've got to remove all of those, the bolts and the spring, and then I'll remove this pressure plate and then remove all the clutch discs. And you notice this right here is what when you pull the clutch in, you're rotating a shaft here, and the teeth on that have to line up with the teeth on this when you put it back so that it pushes that in each time you're using the clutch. Oops. Maybe I didn't re have that recording a while ago, but I'm taking the clutch uh, assembly apart and you've got alternating discs. This is a fiber disc. The one after that is a metal disc and they alternate like that from front to back. So I'll take them all off at once as a pack and remember this will be on the outside when I put them back. Look at here, this must be from the factory. There's like a blue line right here on all the discs. Interesting, I never noticed that before. And then what you see here is the clutch basket. Now this will all have to come off. That's held on with this big nut right here. So I've got a special tool that I have to use that hold this so I can back this off. It's got a little tab right there, a metal tab bent over just to kind of help keep the thing locked in place so it doesn't loosen. Alright, I have my Motion Pro clutch holding tool in place to hold uh, the clutch basket, I guess it's called. And then I've got a 27 millimeter socket that I'll use to loosen that. That'll keep, I've got that a temporary bolt in the frame to hold my clutch holding tool so it doesn't rotate when I try to Take that off. Alright, I've got the clutch nut loose. You notice as I take it off, there is a flat washer. And then there is that little tab that holds it in place. It lines up with, the, with that part of the clutch basket. And then you'll have to bend this back when we go back. Alright, now this part of the inner part of the clutch basket is, or the clutch hub I guess is loose. There's another flat washer there. And make sure we use, put that back properly. And then this comes off 
and you got to be careful when you go back that these gears here line up with this fiber gear. If you don't have that ride, you don't want to force that. If you do, you can break some teeth on that gear. And then right behind there is where this the neutral switch is. There's a guard in front of it, so we'll take all that apart. And there's a neutral sending unit switch, so we'll just see how tight these screws are. There's the first one. Look at that. From the factory. That's how loose that is. Here's the other one. Well, that took a little bit more, but it's still just hand tight. What can happen is these can vibrate out of there, go into your oil passages, and go who knows where and cause some major damage. Loctite and safety wire. Okay, I've got some replacement bolts for the neutral switch. They're 5 millimeter diameter by 16 millimeters long. And when each one, I ground a little flat spot and then drilled a hole through there so that I can run safety wire through. I'm going to not only put Loctite on it, but we're going to safety wire it. Maybe you can see it a little better right there. I've already got one in place. When I put the other one in place, I'll put the safety wire in. Okay, safety wire is in place. Here's my handy dandy little safety wire pliers. I'm going to just pull this out. Twist it real good. Now I gotta put this guard on here, and you know, I never heard of anybody having problems with those screws coming out, but I figured what the heck while I'm at it, I'm just gonna put a dab of blue Loctite on each one of those, you know. No use taking a chance on them coming loose and causing problems. Okay, so I'm going to put it back together. I put this clutch hub, I guess, or basket on there. And it seemed like it was right and lined up. But look here, there's just a little bit of space sticking out on the shaft. So that means this is not in all the way. It evidently did not mesh properly with that fiber gear. So I'll take it off and carefully try to line that up properly. Okay, it's on better. Now this time, what I did is I was pushing this off gently. I also put my finger back there on that fiber gear and just kind of wiggle it a bit and it slid right on. So now, now we're in business. Now that's on properly. Okay, this is one way you can tell that you've got it on properly because this is just finger tight, but you see that it's all the way out to the shaft. So before, you could just barely get that on there. So that tells you it's not lined up properly back there. So, so now I'll get my clutch holding tool again, torque this to 36 foot-pounds, then put the plates in and put her back together. Okay, it's all torqued down. Make sure you remember to bend that tab back in there. It's a, kind of a, to keep the nut in place in case it tries to back off. Alright, I've got the clutch disc, the clutch plates back in, in order. And I don't think it should matter at all, but just for the heck of it, I went ahead and lined up the blue ones there you know really you ought to be able to rotate them anywhere because they they just go into these slots and uh, so now I'll put the pressure plate on and then assemble the rest of it all right now comes the most difficult part is sliding all this cover back on so everything goes together this thing lines up with this little gear there and once you get it right it just pops in but it seems like you got to fiddle with it quite a bit before it finally does. Well, it's my lucky day. This didn't take a minute to line up there. This here feels like it's engaged with the 
uh, with the gear down there for the clutch. So now it's just a matter of putting the bolts back in numerically. lines in place there's two crush washers here make sure they're in and then right behind here there's a little rubber o-ring make sure that's in there next thing is brand new oil filter make sure this rubber o-ring is in there before you put this in the oil filter is buttoned up now I'm ready to put on the brake lever and the little pivot here that goes on to the master cylinder bracket the rear master cylinder but you notice I, I clean these pivots up real good and then put a light coat of grease on there uh, both of them and instead of going back with cotter pins which are a pain in the butt to work on I use these P clips for the brake bigger one there smaller one back here for the master cylinder pivot a little easier to get on they stay in place and they're easier to get off well that's all for today Chuck all back together I've got some oil in there you know it says 2300 milliliters or 2.3 liters I put in two quarts right now we're about up to the top level but once I start it it'll go down and then I'll top it off and that's about it you were asking about foot pegs. It looks like the stock foot peg there. Let's see what I got on mine. I know there's some kind of aftermarket ones. Yeah, considerably wider. I don't see a brand name. Well, yes I do. IMS Pro Series. Huh. Okay. Anyway, yeah, I probably want to order some heavier duty foot pegs, I guess. That's all for today.